Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, August 22nd, 2024. I got Friday tomorrow. Goodness. About uh, 10.04 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity on the globe shows a 1.8 here across the California area. Uh, also, we did see uh, some interesting movement out in Hawaii earlier uh, with a 4.7 earthquake here shaking things up down around the... Uh, upper east or the lower east rift zone here now this earthquake coming in about uh, four miles below the surface for a 4.7 about three almost four o'clock a.m california time here this is going to be my time and uh was felt uh, broadly over the big island of hawaii now the usgs did put out a little notification on this and uh, states that uh, the earthquake here had no apparent impact on either Mauna Loa or Kilauea volcanoes and uh, most of these earthquakes in this region are caused by abrupt motion of Kilauea's volcano's south flank which moves to the southeast over the oceanic crust. Now it's consistent with slip along faults related to the south flank detachment fault. Either way that's kind of an odd earthquake there and uh, not super shallow but uh, just you know about four miles here below the surface with all the increasing activity out here recently over the past uh, seven days, uh, I'd say it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, we got about, uh, this is just in the last week here, specifically in this region of Kilauea Volcano, over 400 earthquakes in a uh, pretty large sequence of events here, mainly up at the Upper East Rift Zone, where I believe uh, most of the magma has been uh, uh, accumulated, so to speak, here underneath this area. No eruption as of yet, but uh, it's uh, it's quite inflated underneath this area. Let's go ahead and check out uh, some information here from the USGS with regards to the inflation going on. Uh, first, I want to show you the 4.7. I'm sure it's pretty easy to spot, right? There it is. Uh, beautiful signature there on that seismograph station. Since then, a couple other aftershock sequences, if you want to call it that, uh, following that 4.7 and a handful of other local quakes here in the area of Kilauea Volcano, mostly in the region where we've been watching this earthquake swarm take place. As uh, far as the inflation data goes here, we got to watch that, see if anything starts uh, acting odd. Uh, there is the, the interesting spike there when that 4.7 came in. This is the uh, vertical displacement at the summit area, and that's about the time that 4.7 came in, seeing a huge sharp rise uh, with that earthquake noticeable here on the weekly chart as well including the monthly so something's uh, brewing up underneath here underneath this hot spot we're on top the hot spot however you want to look at it uh, definitely keep an eye here on the big island of Hawaii uh, as far as any major change though goes in uh, in terms of what's happened since that 4.7 looks like we've neutralized here in terms of the inflation just leveling off a little bit here but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on the Big Island of Hawaii. There is, uh, you know, 400 and something earthquakes. No eruption as of yet, but uh, things are continuing to get interesting uh, across this area. All right, uh, California, zoom in here to the west coast. Beautiful day out here. Only supposed to be about 89 degrees and then 70s tomorrow. I'll take it. A little earthquake here off the northern branch of the San Andreas Fault near Santa Rosa, 1.8 near Bodega Bay. Nothing big. Uh, also another earthquake here from early this morning, a three-pointer uh, at the southern, well, this is gonna be the northern end here of the San Andreas Fault, right about the Mendocino Fault line here. And uh, not a big earthquake, but seven miles deep here for that quake. We've seen a, a little increasing movement out here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone uh, due to tremor activity here over the last week or so. Uh, nothing major going on through the Pacific Northwest, uh, further back down south here in Southern California. Um, nothing in terms of 2.5 and above. Things are pretty quiet out there, aside from a couple small microquakes in uh, some various locations out here. No major unusual activity to note there in Southern California for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park uh, looks like they had a couple earthquakes there from yesterday, some small quakes. But uh, let's double check that and make sure we got the correct information here. I always like to check the live or at least the recorded data here 
uh, in case some of these quakes don't get listed. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity just by looking at these graphs here. There's a couple of the smaller ones. Um, these are going to be the smaller ones there from yesterday. Maybe a handful, one or two, maybe one or two more uh, just after midnight there. But Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet in terms of earthquake activity. Western Texas out there in the oil fields getting hit with a little bit of movement. Nothing big. New Madrid Seismic Zone seeing this earthquake there from yesterday. Uh, eastern portion of the country, what we've got down here in Georgia. 2.4 shaking things up here in the southeastern area. Uh, yeah, they don't get too many earthquakes out there, right? Near Hagen, Georgia. Uh, about the surface level here for this quake, a 0 .4, 0 0.4 miles below the surface. Uh, let's see what we have out here for this earthquake. It's going to be... Uh, well, it's going to be right next to... Uh, hard to tell what that is. I can't tell if it's any some type of pumping operation out there or what, but uh, something. A lot of times these oil fields will be marked out here on the map, but uh, I'm really not seeing anything that says anything about oil fields out here but uh you never know all right backing out here let's check out the world view see if any um any other major earthquakes struck out here in the last 24. uh so far today after midnight the largest one is going to be a 5.1 earthquake here about four o'clock this morning in the indonesia islands area for about 64 miles deep here for this quake uh, a couple other larger ones from yesterday but uh yeah i mean it's uh uh, pretty active out on the Big Island, obviously, and more active up on the northern edge of the Pacific Ring of Fire here recently than it has been down south. So, And, of course, it goes through these little phases here, moving around. It's not always going to be active on the south or north. It's going to adjust accordingly. Uh, a couple smaller earthquakes here through Alaska today. Most of this movement here from yesterday, uh, if not all of it there in the Kuril Kamchatka Trench and uh, off the coast of Japan there, seeing a couple earthquakes We'll continue to keep an eye on that region as well as they've been, uh, you know, pretty active out there recently. 4.4 Aleutian Trench right there. Uh, let's see. we got a little bit of movement. Some fours out there across Taiwan. Nothing big. It's almost, you know, always happening. New Zealand area is pretty quiet. Look at that. We've gone quiet back out here again. Aside from a 4.9 there in the Tonga Trench. Uh, that earthquake is from today. About 5 o'clock my time here for 4.9, 224 kilometers deep here, getting uh, some deeper activity. But aside from that, it's quiet out here across this plate boundary. But uh, I'm sure it won't be that way for long. Middle America Trench here, a lot of earthquake activity from yesterday. It looks like we had another 4.2 here, a little bit further down south uh, towards the Nicaragua area. Uh, seen a handful of earthquakes there in that region of the Middle America Trench with a uh, southward migration here. So I'll uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that region. South America area, uh, most of the mo movement here has been into the middle area of the Prue-Chile Trench. Notice that downward trend here, that migrational pattern kicking up right now. So maybe looking at some larger scale activity about ready to take place in this region. Uh, middle East and the Mediterranean regions, couple twos out here, really nothing big. All this activity here, the five and threes from yesterday there in, um, in the China area. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, aside from a 4.7 there from last night. Pretty certain that came in last night here. Yeah, late afternoon, yesterday. Let's go check out the Iceland activity. Uh, 46 earthquakes here, but we got a cluster going on across this area uh, area of the Savart Singhi region. Let me bring up the all magnitudes. <clears throat> and um, some of these are getting up there. Like if you go click this right here, it only uh, takes away a couple of the very small quakes. But aside from that, getting a little clustering going on here. Uh, various magnitude earthquakes. Uh, some shallow, some deep. Right around the Lagerfell area. This is where most Lagerfell is going to be right about here. Hagerfell, Slingerfell region all up here where the last couple eruptions have taken place there across Iceland. Uh, but this time, at least right now, it looks like we're getting more activity 
uh, down south compared to up north. And that's all obviously a little bit of concern, right? Because you got Grindavik right here. Uh, we did see uh, with one of the eruptions, I think it was back in January, maybe February, where we've seen a fissure event open up here just outside of this area here of the town of Grindavik and uh, burned a home or two in this region and maybe two of them, I think. And so there's obviously still concern that we could see some further uh, magma intrusion down south, with which could ultimately lead into a fissure eruptive event here uh, in or around the Grindavik area. So we'll continue to watch that. Um, and of course, the earthquake activity is, to key, is key to watching what's going on below the surface as well. Uh, constant activity. Let's go check this out real quick and see if there's any update. This update was put out a couple days ago. Um, they'd just been chatting about how the seismic activity is growing day by day and that there's clear signs that pressure is building in the region. Um, and in fact, the pressure that we're seeing right now is greater than any time before, even during the last few eruptions out here. So building up some big time inflation underneath this area of Iceland. All right. Uh, Space weather activity out here, uh, not a whole lot in terms of aurora forecast. Fairly green across the board, that means uh, not a whole lot of auroras. Uh, flare threat still remains somewhat elevated, 20% chance for X flare, M flare at 60, C flare around 99% chance. And uh, we do have quite a few sunspots that are currently looking at us. Um, as far as the Earth directed view goes, And uh, this area right here, this sunspot region, looks like it's starting to get a little bit more complex magnetic uh, instability here around the central core. That could amplify potential for some flaring from that sunspot. This one I'm really not too concerned with. Uh, and then this area here has been the source of uh, a couple different M flares here recently. So we'll continue to watch that area. A couple newer spots around the eastern limb of the sun but uh, really not looking all that complex out there on that area but uh, well, I guess we'll see what the sun wants to do right but no major roars in the forecast and uh, yeah a little quiet at least not super quiet but a little bit less dramatic than what we had seen here back in May with all that uh, X flare activity and subsequent CMEs well, that was a lot of activity nonetheless all right uh, let's see Asteroid approaches here today. Uh, in a few days, we got a 110 foot size asteroid coming, but uh, that's about 3 million miles from Earth. And really, looking at the next uh, few asteroids out here, there's really none of any concern uh, here from the NASA site. But, uh, you know, there's obviously other asteroids out there that may be of smaller size that have been undetected. And uh, they're always looking for those as well, but uh, sometimes they're hard to spot. So just uh, as far as anything major goes, though, it's pretty quiet. Thunderstorm outlook here today. Got a little slight risk here across western Kansas, eastern um, Colorado here as well. No tornado threat across the country for now. Uh, mainly wind. Yeah, wind threat looks like from thunderstorms and a little bit of hail. Slight chance of hail out there across the uh, uh, Utah and eastern Colorado region but aside from that um, yeah not a whole lot going on for severe weather out here along the west coast we got a, uh, a super deep low pressure trough here gonna bring some rain and even a little bit of snow up here in the mountains of Northern California snow in August Woo. that's unheard of out here in California even rain here in August is uh, almost unheard of unless we got some type of tropical system coming up or monsoonal moisture. But this is a deep, low pressure cold trough here that's really going to drop the temperatures out here across Northern California and, in fact, the rest of the uh, uh, Pacific Northwest as well. 20 degrees below average out here across a good portion of the western. Uh, states here and it's going to be nice. I'm going to be loving every minute of it outside. Today is kind of a cooler day, 89 degrees, and then tomorrow we drop down closer to 80 and then some 70 degree temperature activity to finish off the weekend. So I'm, I'm loving it. I like the cooler weather. All right, uh, what else we got here, folks? Seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out here for now. 
Have a good day. Enjoy your Thursday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Take care, folks. Stay safe.